I'm Martin. I make videos on hardware and software, and today I'll help you get put bleh. And today I'll help you get started with some cinematic phone footage. If you have a newish phone, you most likely carry an amazing camera in your pocket every single day. What if you want to start shooting more cinematic style videos? When you start looking into what that means, you quickly realize that your phone camera has several constraints. Capturing images and moving images is about capturing light. In order to capture light, you have to control the light. With the constraints from your phone's lenses and the 180 degree shutter speed rule, which we will look into in detail later in this video, you have no choice but to get an ND filter to dim the light down to your liking. Let's have a look at the Sandmark Scape ND filters for the phone. Sandmark sent me these filters for review. However, no money changed hands and this video is made based on my experience with the products over several months of use. They do not get to see the video before you do. If you want to pick up a filter or two, I'll leave my affiliate links in the description below. Now, to understand why you would need to pick up ND filters in the first place, we have to get nerdy. So get your coffee ready and let's dive into it. Remember how we said capturing an image is about capturing light. Now inside your camera there is a sensor. Light is projected onto the sensor and this captured light will represent what you would refer to as a photo or a series of photos, aka video. Now three factors allow you to control light. Aperture controls how much light you let into the camera. Shutter speed controls how long you allow light to enter your camera. And ISO controls how sensitive your sensor is to light. Let's start with aperture. A lens has a set of physical blades making up a ring that can change in size. When it changes in size, it determines how much light is allowed to pass through the lens and into the camera. An F value indicates the size of this hole. If you have a look around on your lens, you'll usually find the aperture range of your lens. A high F value represents a small hole allowing some light to pass through, while a low F value represents a big hole where lots of light may pass through. Aperture also affects the depth of field in your image. If you're looking for a shallow depth of field, you want to set your aperture or your F value low, allowing more light to pass through the lens. Now, this is all cool on regular cameras, but on the iPhone, like the iPhone 13 Pro we have here today, it's a bit of a different story. Most of the magic happens with computational photography these days, so you don't have the same creative freedom with your phone. If we look at the lens options on the iPhone, we have the following. A 13mm ultrawide lens with an aperture of 1.8 a 26 mm wide lens with an aperture of f 1.5, a 77 mm telephoto lens with an aperture of 2.8. All of these apertures are locked, so when you choose a wide lens, for example, you are stuck with an aperture of 1.5. The default iPhone camera app does pretty much everything for you. To be able to control as much as possible on your phone, you would need to download a separate camera app as the default one caters more to people who just want to get a good shot done in any situation without too much thinking. I'm currently experimenting with Filmic Pro and Pro Camera, but there are many camera apps out there. So just find the one you're happy with and just make sure you can adjust and lock the shutter and ISO. When you allow all this light through, you basically blow out the image. Therefore, you will need help from one of the other factors. Now, shutter speed is the next one we want to look at. You can think of the shutter as a door that stays open for as long as you tell it to, so light will reach the sensor. The shutter will typically stay open for a fraction of a second, faster than you can blink, to several seconds, depending on your footage. But can you set the shutter speed to whatever you want when you're shooting video? Not if you want to follow the 180 degree rule. Now back in the day you had a rolling shutter with a physical rotary disc controlling the shutter. This disc would open and close and they found that with a 180 degree opening it would give you the look you are used to seeing in movies. It would spin once with an opening of 180 degrees before moving on to the next image. 
This gives us the smooth looking footage with some nice motion blur. I'm shooting with these settings right now and you can see how much my hands blur. With a super fast shutter speed, it would look super sharp and less like film. It would end up somewhere between film and reality, or even worse, so crisp that it just looks weird. In today's cameras, we mimic this rule by saying you should shoot with a shutter speed double your frame rate. Uh, what this means technically is that you should set your shutter speed to 1 over double the frame rate. So if you shoot at 24 frames per second, which is what most movies are shot at, you would set 1 over 2 times 24, which is 48. The shutter speed is therefore 1 48th of a second. You can see that this means that our shutter will be locked to this number, so we won't get that much help from the shutter when it comes to getting a shot that is dark enough. If you can't find 48 on your camera, you most likely have 50, which is close enough. Some cameras, like the Blackmagic Pocket series, have an option to set the shutter to 180 degrees. This way, it will adapt to whatever you set the frame rate to. The last of the three factors is ISO. ISO basically tells your camera how sensitive it is. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive it is, and the image gets brighter. This is good if you need an extra boost in low light conditions, the drawback is that you get some more noise in your footage. In our case, we will be shooting in bright outdoors conditions, therefore the ISO will not have a significant impact. As you probably understood by now, when we look at both the aperture and the shutter speed, we need external help to dim down the image. 1 48th of a second might sound fast, but it's really not. So we will have to deal with a lot of light, especially outdoor. Now let's look at this in action so you can see what it looks like. This footage is completely worthless. It's just a huge white blob of light. And the reason for this is that we have locked the shutter on the iPhone. It's 1 over 48th now. And the reason we did that is because we're shooting 24 FPS right now. So we want to lock that to respect the 180 degree rule. Now, because of this, we can't see anything. There's still too much light in this environment. So I'm gonna add an ND filter on top of the lenses so you can see how that looks. So now that we have an ND filter on, you can clearly see that this footage is way more usable. So basically what we did, we added sunglasses to the iPhone so you can keep shooting because it's just too bright outside and there's no way you can lock ISO, shutter and aperture in this environment with the kind of limited control you have on the iPhone. So that's why we have to introduce this new element of ND filters. So we're gonna look at what you get if you buy ND filters, the ones we're looking at today or something similar, and then we're gonna do some test footage. It's a beautiful day, so hopefully the ND filter will come in handy. Let's go. Fantastic. I hope that was an eye-opener and that you can see that if you want to shoot more film It's pretty obvious that ND filters can help you and let's see what you get when you buy one of the filter packs from Sandmark You get the travel pouch with three filters and the clip What filters live in the box depends on what you choose when you buy one I got the strong pack with 32 64 and 128 representing five stops, six stops, and seven stops. You can also buy the alternative pack with four, eight, and 16, representing two stops, three stops, and four stops. If you're not sure which one to get, Sandmark recommends four to eight on cloudy winter days, 16 to 22 on mild cloudy days, fall, spring, and 64 to 128 on sunny days in the summer. Now, basically, the brighter the environment, the higher you go. If you want a more convenient experience, you can get the variable ND filter instead, ranging from 8 to 64. 
We briefly talked about motion blur and smooth footage earlier. Now let's set up a shot where we can see how motion blur behaves with different shutter speeds so you can decide for yourself what style you like. If we look at this item using a shutter speed of 1 48th, we can see that it has this nice motion blur to it. If we look at this shot where we set a higher shutter speed, we get a bit more stuttery footage. If we freeze frame, you can see the difference. I'll let you decide what you want to use, when you want to use it, but I often prefer the first footage here. It just feels more natural. The range between 32 to 128 has covered my needs so far. I've been out shooting in sunny spring weather, so I obviously need a strong filter. I can see how having the lower range as well to be prepared for any situation will be beneficial. So how has the experience been? Has it been all good or are there things that could be better? There always is, so let's do a quick summary. The travel pouch makes it easy to carry around, it's protected, although material-wise it doesn't feel that premium, but it does its job just fine. I was never worried about the gear getting damaged. The clip doesn't really live anywhere, so you just have to add it to wherever you can fit it. If you're not paying attention when you unpack them, they can fall out of the inner pockets, so pay attention to gravity. You don't want to break that expensive glass. Because it is a bit expensive. These packs cost close to $100. The shape of the clip and filters allow a huge range of compatibility, which is great. Unfortunately, the clip thereby takes up a lot of screen estate. It can actually block settings on your heads-up display or parts of your shot. Not a deal breaker, but it's a bit annoying. If possible for future generations, maybe Sandmark should consider limiting the compatibility for a smaller range of phones and have several clips. The iPhone 12, 13 and 14, they have a similar frame design, for example. And that brings us to the next issue. And that is that iPhones used to be phones with a camera bump. Now they are a camera bump with some phone attached to it. It's ginormous on the iPhone 13 Pro and I can only expect that to grow in the future. Sometimes, if I'm not paying attention, I will misplace the filter and create some vignetting because it's physically in the way. And it's supposed to cover a massive bump. Another thing you need to look for is light leaks. In many situations when playing in the sun, I had to adjust the framing or use something to block and prevent lights to leak through, creating unwanted flares and basically ruining the shot. Now this is something that Sandmark is aware of and they warn you about it on their website. The last thing you need to consider is sound. I use an external microphone, so for me it doesn't really matter, but if you use this as a vlog style setup, the filter physically blocks the microphone on the back and thereby it muffles the sound. I use the Rode Wireless Go, it's a great companion for the phone. Alternatively, you can look into the Rode VideoMic Lightning. It also comes with a USB-C options for those futuristic phones. Some apps allow you to swap the active microphone between the back and the front, but you would most likely want to use the microphone facing you. So if you shoot with the back camera, the microphone is blocked. Let's have a look at how that sounds. If you're using the phone like this for a vlog style setup, this is how it sounds with the filter off, so the sound is not blocked at all. The microphone is facing me, and the microphone I'm using is the one on the back side of the phone. So now we're going to listen to what it sounds like with the filter on. Same shot with the filter on, so this sound should be a bit muffled because it's covering the microphone. So just listen to your, for yourself and see if that's a deal breaker for you, if you want to use an external microphone, if you want to flip the microphone to the front or back or whatever you want to do. At least this is how it sounds. To sum it up, you definitely need ND filters to be able to shoot at 24 frames per second with a shutter of 1 48th of a second. Again, you can't control the aperture and the ISO plays a small role in bright conditions, so you're forced to dim down the light. I'm happy I got them because without them, you're forced to use a faster shutter. And to me, the whole point is to try and capture that cinematic feel we're all used to. Thanks to the three people who made it all the way to the end. I'll link some great videos on the topic of shutter if you want to dive deeper into that. Till next time, happy filming.